Hello there, this is Mark. Are you ready for a new lesson? Great, let's start. An ant, a tiny insect, lives in a social colony. His dog, Oz, is always barking. In this lesson, we're going to talk about appositives, so stay tuned. Right, appositives. What are they? Well, it could be a word or groups of words that describe or even rename the pronoun or the noun right beside it. It can come before or after the main noun or noun group. It can be a short or long combination of words and it usually sets off by using commas unless it is closely related to the pronoun or the noun that it describes. The use of noun groups uh, in a position is closely related to defining and non-defining relative clauses. If you want to know what a relative clause is, you may watch a lesson by clicking here. Right, so let's look at the examples now. An ant, a tiny insect with a sting, lives in the social colony with one or more breeding queens. This is longer than the one that I gave you at the beginning of the lesson. In this case, we have a tiny insect with a sting, is the appositive, okay, and is between two commas, as you can see. Okay, so this is an extra information that I give about an ant. And in this case, a tiny insect with a sting is not essential in the sentence, but it describes or it defines the subject, which is an ant. Now, let's take a look at the second example. My neighbor, an immigrant from Ghana, usually has lunch late. So, in this case, the appositive is an immigrant from Ghana. Again, is between two commas. And if you take out this extra information, the sentence still makes sense. So I could say, my neighbor usually has lunch late. But if I add more information, I describe the noun, in this case, my neighbor, which is the subject. Now, let's take a look at the third example. A great innovator, comma, Salvador Dali, is regarded for his outrageous paintings. And here I added the appositive first. A great innovator. Who? Salvador Dali. So, you could leave this out and the sentence would make sense. So, I could say, Salvador Dali is regarded for his outrageous paintings. It makes sense. Now, the other example that I listed at the beginning was, his dog Oz is always barking. Oz here is the appositive and is without commas, okay? Because I'm describing actually the dog, so his dog Oz. No other dog. His dog, Oz, is always barking. Now, when you use a noun that is too general, the appositive must be placed in the sentence. That's why the appositive is essential in the sentence. What do I mean by this? Let's take a look at three examples. The infamous tycoon, Robert Doerr, was charged of corrupting a judge. Without the appositive, which is Robert Doerr, it will read as, the infamous was charged of corrupting a judge. Who is the infamous tycoon? Instead, Robert Doerr, the infamous tycoon, was charged of corrupting a judge. And in this case, the infamous tycoon would be the appositive if uh, we know who was charged, Robert Doerr. Now, and uh, here you can see the commas between the appositive. The third example, 
Robert Doerr, the infamous tycoon, was totally different from the Robert Doerr, the benefactor. If you take out the infamous, um, the infamous tycoon and the benefactor, it wouldn't make sense. So the qualities here, which are the positives, are essential in the meaning, the whole meaning of the sentence. Now, let's recap. In this lesson, we looked at appositives. They can be placed before or after the main noun or pronoun. You will need to remember when to use the commas, though. I suggest you watch the lesson again if you haven't understood. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate all your comments and all your suggestions for a new lesson. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and don't forget to share my video. It's extremely important. Have a nice week and a nice weekend, and I see you next week with a new lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.